First try. This is our 2007 Toyota Yaris, and it burns oil like crazy. In fact, it burns so much oil that we wondered if we should stop doing oil changes altogether. In a recent video, I had an oil sample from this car analyzed after 5,000 miles, but for this test, we went 18,000 miles without an oil change, just topping off the oil when needed. The only difference this time around is that I use 10W30 oil instead of 5W30 because I'm in the middle of another experiment testing the myth that using thicker viscosity oil reduces oil consumption, so stay tuned for that video coming soon. The total runtime for this oil was 18,036 miles over the course of 7 months and 17 days, including a 2200 mile move from Oregon to Arkansas that we completed in 4 days. That's an average of 546.5 miles per week, or about 78.1 miles per day. When I took the last sample, this motor was consuming one quarter of oil approximately every 1,866 miles, but now it's more like one quart every 1,222 miles, which is a pretty significant difference. I'm not sure if the problem with the valve seals is getting worse, or if it has something to do with using different viscosity oil, but I should be able to find the answer with the oil consumption test I'm currently running. Last time, the lab results were pretty good, so they told me to try a 7,000 mile run, but we more than doubled that number for this test, so the results should be pretty interesting. With all that said, let's get to it, starting with the comments from the lab. David. We agree that adding all that fresh oil is essentially giving your Yaris continuous oil changes, so it's fine that you went longer on this fill. Unfortunately though, all the makeup oil is diluting metals, so it may be more challenging to spot issues that might crop up. We hope oil consumption is due to leaky seals, and the fact that the balance of metals seems pretty normal kind of supports that idea, but we can't entirely rule out something like a ring problem. A compression check might give you answers, but at nearly 320,000 miles, just topping off might suffice too. The TBN is fine. When they say the makeup oil is diluting metals, what they mean is that a portion of the wear metals are leaving the car along with the oil being burned, and adding fresh oil helps keep the oil supply relatively clean, so it can be hard to tell if something is wearing more than usual because we won't see as much of a buildup of any of the wear metals. However, I hadn't added fresh oil for about two weeks before taking the sample, so if any wear metals were to report relatively high compared to the other elements in the sample, we would still be able to recognize that there may be excessive wear. Piston rings on an engine with this many miles could certainly be showing a lot of wear, and I would like to do a compression test on this engine, I just don't have a tool for that yet, but now that I think of it, I could probably rent one. Anyway, let's take a look at the elements found in the oil and compare the results to our 5000 mile test. I've organized the data from Blackstone into my own spreadsheet so it's easier to understand. As with the previous sample, the only wear metals that showed up were aluminum and iron, but the numbers are still in line with the universal averages and almost exactly the same as what we got last time. Molybdenum and boron are significantly higher than last time, but they're most likely to be oil additives. Additives can vary drastically from one batch of oil to the next, and don't forget I'm using a different viscosity oil this time, so I'm not surprised to see some variation here. Calcium and magnesium also show some variation in comparison to the previous sample, but they're just detergents, which can also vary from one batch of oil to the next. The rest of the elements appear to fall in line with expectations, and like the lab said in their comments, nothing here really suggests there's a problem, so let's move on to the oil properties. Both measurements of viscosity fall well within range, and the flash point is significantly higher than last time, which I can't really explain, but it's a good thing. Leave a comment if you know why there's such a big difference in the flash points between the two tests. They didn't find any significant amount of fuel in the oil, which is a good sign that the piston rings are still in good shape. The piston rings are something the lab suggested might be the cause of our oil consumption, but as far as I understand it, if fuel isn't getting down past the rings into the oil, then oil probably isn't coming up past the rings into the combustion chamber. But leave a comment letting me know why I'm wrong. The lab didn't find any antifreeze or water in the sample, which indicates this engine is unlikely to have a head gasket leak, and insolubles were only measured at 0.2%, which is quite low. I also paid the lab an additional fee to test the TBN, which is something that many viewers have asked for in the comments of my previous videos. TBN stands for total base number, and it's a measurement of how much base additive is remaining in the oil to offset the effects of acids entering the oil from combustion and other sources. TBN readings for fresh oil start between 6.0 and 14.0, depending on if the engine runs on gasoline or diesel. The lab says we want to see results higher than 1.0, because anything less than that means we're running out of additive. Just like last time, this oil sample had a very good reading at 4.2, and that's thanks to all the fresh oil that's been added since the last oil change. 
So in the end, it appears that we could just keep topping off the oil indefinitely without seeing any negative impacts from omitting complete oil changes, but personally, there's no way I'd put one of these little oil filters through more than 20,000 miles of abuse, which is all it's rated for. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm currently testing this car with oils of different viscosities to see if that affects oil consumption, so keep an eye out for that video coming in the near future. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe for more of the best DIY videos on the internet. And until next time, just keep throwing money at it.